Hey guys, it's Flukerson the Optimist, and I'm having trouble keeping my mind off everything I experienced in the beta of Monster Hunter World. During my time playing the beta, I like to think I found some cool little features that most of you guys may not be aware of. Most being the keyword. Some of you guys are bigger Monster Hunter nuts than I am, so you may already know about a few of these. I'm gonna be honest, I'm just making this video so I can rave about how cool this game is, so I don't wanna see no comments showing up. This is all just cool stuff that's in the beta that surprised me, and I don't know how transparent I can be about that. Alright, without any further ado, and in keeping with my namesake, this is gonna be five reasons you should be optimistic about Monster Hunter World. Okay, yeah, I get it. The idea of sparing or capturing monsters isn't new to the series, but in the Monster Hunter World beta, you aren't given the tools necessary for the job, at least not right off the bat. If you were like me and went off the hunt to start picking up every resource you get your hands on, you may find some parashrooms and sleep herbs. Parashrooms are these big yellow mushrooms, and sleep herbs look like big white dandelions, and if you mash them together, you get trank bombs. Now you veteran hunters may be happy to know that you don't need to craft bomb casings anymore. You just mash two plants together and bam, you've got a roofie to take down Godzilla. <coughs> Capturing a monster is still business as usual. Attack a monster till it limps, trap it, and then hurl two packets of sleepy time meds at it. Now you have your own still very alive monster and you complete the quest. And you're probably going to do this a lot since it gives you more reward items in the main game. The world of Monster Hunter seems to keep changing as bits and pieces of it get destroyed or tossed around while your hunt keeps escalating. I was already impressed when I was fighting a Baroth that would break the rocky pillars in the desert which we were using to get easy mounts. But then we had an Anjanath create a path through a dense jungle and we even had some Palicos lying in ambush that trapped him for us. But nothing compares to what awaited us at the top of the nest of the Rathalos. Fluke story time! Yeah. Now I don't want to enforce harmful stereotypes, but throw some for honor YouTubers into any game and we're going to figure out how to throw whatever we're fighting off a ledge. Now at the time, number one digital emote spammer Zero Crack was in the habit of placing barrel bombs everywhere. Yay! What we didn't know at the time was that the Rathalos makes his nest right next to some kind of water basin, and what happened next is probably my favorite gaming moment in the last few years. Not only did we take the monster out of his element doing a massive amount of damage, but we also set up a certain patch note enthusiast for a chance to steal some glory. Ooh. What's going on everyone, Bal's Phoenix here. By the way, for those of you new to the series, it's always good to mount a monster as much as possible since it delivers a good amount of damage to each breakable part of the monster and it also immobilizes them for a little bit. Normally you need a ledge to do so, but if you have a partner with a greatsword or a hammer, you can boost it up and get a mount wherever you want. Man, that greatsword animation reminds me of golf swinging in Dark Souls 2. I should get back to that pretty soon. In the Monster Hunter games I've played, the monsters you hunt never really interacted with each other very much. Sometimes the bigger carnivorous creatures would hunt down the docile mobs for food when they were exhausted, and sometimes two aggressive monsters would hit each other if they got close together, but it always felt more like a team-based game with occasional friendly fire than any kind of animal behavior, at least speaking strictly from a gameplay perspective. In Monster Hunter World, monsters would go out of their way to attack and take down other large monsters that step into their territory. Not only that, but some monsters have unique interactions, some being awesome to witness and some being more Jesus. My personal favorite was the catfish looking monster. Uh, oh lordy. Uh, Geratidus. Geratidus. Catfish monster. I don't know. Maybe it's just a southern thing, but I just loved everything this monster did. Especially when one minute I'm on a standard hunt for the Baroth, we apparently wallow into the catfish man's muddy home, and then holy shit! He wraps around and starts strangling poor Rocky. First time I saw this, I was just absolutely speechless, and I just can't wait to see what other monsters do to each other in the main game. Uh, 
Okay, this one sounds really boring, but hear me out, it's a big deal. Before, you had to put your weapon away to use items, and now thanks to the radio quick action menu, you can use any item whenever you want, like a whetstone to sharpen your weapon, and you can have your weapon out, it's great. This sounds, this sounds so boring. Okay, look, veteran hunters are gonna like this, okay, trust me. Before, only the sword and shield weapon type could do this. Oh man, why even use the sword and shield anymore? That was like my second favorite. Alright, number one thing I'm excited for in Monster Hunter World. Some of you may have caught on by now. It's been in a few clips already. Let's see if you've spotted it. Drum roll, please. No, seriously, I can't wait for the fashion in this game, guys. Some of you may play Dark Souls, a lot more of you probably play For Honor, which is weird to say, but I mean, that's kind of the audience I've, I've grabbed. You guys have no idea of the fashion game in Monster Hunter, I'm so excited. Hell, I might even have some fashion shows on this channel, that might be kind of fun. Well anyway, that's all I got for this video. I hope you didn't mind hearing me talk for a while instead of memes for once. I just wanted to share some of my thoughts for this upcoming game, and hopefully one or two of you all will appreciate it. If you have a PS4 and would like to give the game a try, the free beta will be opening up again from December 22nd to December 26th. We're now at the point where I have to say, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. I have a Twitter and a Discord with some cool guys if you want to stay up to date. Thank you for stopping by everybody, and good hunting.